This episode of the Everyday Mermaid Podcast is sponsored by the Mermaid Box. Ah! That's the sound it makes when you open it in your head, not, <laughs> not in real life. But it's it's fantastic. And that sound is truly like that tells you everything you need to know about the Mermaid Box. I actually think I do make that sound every time we open it. <laughs> It's true. Pretty it's sure. so magical. <laughs> and you can pick yours up at mermaidful.com. They are also on Facebook and Instagram at mermaidful. And if you want to use my code mermaidvlogs, you can get a little percentage off of your subscription box. I mean, the last couple of months have been great. We've gotten some mermaid sweatshirts, mm-hmm. some t-shirts, some hair products, jewelry, basically anything mermaid they're going to have in these boxes. And you will not be disappointed, mermaids. Check them out at mermaidful.com. Do it, do it. Hey everybody, it's Abby, your Everyday Mermaid, and this is Lauren. my Mer Gal Pal, and this is Brett Stanley, everyone. Yay! Hi. Oh my word. I am so excited to have you on the show. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. We're here at Mermagic Con, and tell us a little bit about what your role is here this weekend. Uh, I've been photographing mermaids, strangely. What? Yeah, I know. Here at the con? <laughs> That's I crazy. Why. Um, I've spent the last two days, well, not the whole two days, but, you know, half of both of those days just, yeah, being in the water with uh, with some amazing mermaids and taking photos. It's been really cool. Yeah. And how long have you been uh, underwater photography ing exactly? I've been underwater for about seven years now. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, Were you interested in it and that's what got you into it? Or Yeah, how did you get did into somebody it? somebody just push you in a pool? Uh, I got pushed in a pool when I was like 16. As soon as I, well, no, when I, when I was born, I was put in a pool basically. So right. I grew up as like a water baby. Yeah, cute. And spent all summer and well, winter in the pool. Um, and as soon as I was old enough to get my dive ticket, mm. I just went and just did scuba diving and that was, that was kind of me. Like I was hooked on this stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then, but back then I wasn't a photographer cause I was 14. Um, <laughs> right. Sure. And <clears throat> I became a photographer, I don't know, maybe probably 15 years ago and I was doing commercial stuff. But yeah. when I was diving, I'd really um, just taken pictures of fish, which I find really boring. <laughs> um, they don't take direction very well. It's mm, not this great. This is true. Um, but I was in a, working in New Zealand and I wanted something that was going to set me apart a little bit. I think she's been to New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, Lauren, <laughs> as we all know, has uh, spent some time in New Zealand and just absolutely loves it. So <laughs> I don't blame you. It is my spiritual home. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was just looking for something different and I found my old underwater camera in a storage oh. and I thought, well, let's try this and see if I can take any decent photos with this and um, just got, got hooked on it, just shooting people yeah, underwater. Got hooked on, um, on it, did you? Pun not intended. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. So yeah, and then it just kind of took off and people started to like what I was doing mm-hmm. and um then I just really got in, into trying to do other things under there that I hadn't seen done before. So That's really cool. Yeah. And which includes building these full underwater sets for your photography. Tell yeah. us how you got into that exactly. What inspired such things? I, I just love the abstract. So the, being underwater for me is like it's a dream world. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a movie in, from the 80s called The Big Blue. I don't okay. Have ever heard of it? But it's basically a f- free diving movie. Okay. Um, with famous actors in it. Oh. Famous '80s actors. Yeah. Um, and it's about these two guys who grew up in an. I think it was in an Italian island, and they were mm-hmm. became uh, competition free divers. And there's a scene in this movie where one guy who just wants to never come back up again has this dream sequence where the room fills up full of water from the roof Mm -hmm. down and it comes down to meet him. Um, And that had always stuck in my brain. And then seeing things like the abyss where they go into the room and all the water pulls out. Mm -hmm. Um, And any movie where there's like underwater rooms Mm -hmm. had always stuck with me. And when I got into doing underwater, I just wanted, that was like my goal was to shoot and build sets underwater. Yeah. So when I uh, bought a house in LA with my wife uh, a couple of years ago, we built a pool and that just opened the floodgates. Pun intended. Pun so intended. Yeah. Yes. I love that. What's the director? 
Del Toro. Mm. Yeah, The Shape of Water. Thank you. I saw that in New Zealand. Oh, um, right. Yeah. yeah, and so that's that's a whole dream sequence where she's she wakes up underwater. Mm-hmm. Or, well, she in in the dream wakes up underwater and uh, like her whole house is. Yeah. And that's really cool. And funnily enough, that entire sequence is not shot underwater. That. <laughs> That whole movie, Lauren. I think there's very few sequences that they actually did underwater. All right. I'm well, so disappointed now. I know. What a lost opportunity. I know. <laughs> <totally>. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> but I think it was just easier. Yeah, yeah. it was easier. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's funny. But if you ever want to see um, a film, like a behind the scenes film of an underwater film, yeah. see on YouTube, you can find the behind the scenes videos for The Abyss. Okay. And that is incredible because they shot that all. Mm-hmm. Underwater, yeah, practically, and those actors would be underwater for days at a time. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really neat. So, how? What is your like favorite setup like thus far that you've done? Because you've done a few, right? So, as in the rooms that I've built, yeah. Um, I think my favorite so far is the Halloween one I did. Oh, yeah, with the TV. Yeah. 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 So how do you get, like, do you light the television and stuff in post, or is that all, like, all like lit down? It's all there? practical. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, I'm losing my brain cells. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Star Wars. <laughs> so I'm putting lights inside everything. So gotcha. my I've come from a background of, you know, doing a lot of Photoshop. Yeah. And now I'm in this kind of mindset now where I'm trying to do everything in shot Mm -hmm. and there's there's one shot that I did in that um in that set which was a self-portrait of myself Mm -hmm. floating in that room and there's no photoshop at all the tv's lit up the lamp's lit up yeah I'm floating in the middle there and there's we ended up finding like uh, you know police yeah. crime scene tape yeah. mm-hmm. and it's just throughout the whole room yeah, it's cool. and it oh, just looks man. like it's been photoshopped up the wazoo but it's yeah. it's oh, out of camera effects. it's incredible wowza yeah that and that's when cool. I took that look that on the back of the camera and went oh <laughs> <laughs> you might have to bleep that out yeah. but we have a yeah. little dolphin yeah. sound we, we put do. in there <laughs> yeah it's all good that's so amazing. Now, now my question is like, and did you do this all in your studio at your house? Yes. So, what does your wife think? Of all this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, like, yeah. She kind of oh humors you. me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she's not really into the water at all. She likes to be near water and on water, okay. but really doesn't have a lot of interest in being in and the water. water. Yeah. Um, and so I was trying to to convince her to to take the photos for me. Yeah. And she was like, No, I'm not getting in there. <laughs> okay. So self timer. Yeah. Put it on, you know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is yeah. you go. This yeah. is all yeah. That's Pretty much. So She's just like, just clean up after yourself. <laughs> yeah. That is marriage. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's very patient. I yeah. love that. So your wife's not like in the creative space at all or No, no, she is. So she's okay. a she's a hairstylist. She works oh, in perfect. film uh, and television. So Oh, well that's cool. Um she's Indirectly on her way to win an Oscar this year. So, <gasps> oh, that's, awesome. that's exciting. Yeah. That's awesome. Good yeah. for her. Yay. Very cool. Uh, so, and so people, when they meet us, they're like, oh my God, so you guys must work together all the time, right? right? She's like, mm-hmm. no. 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 <laughs> I think we've, we've done like one underwater shoot together. Huh. And um, where she helped do like the hair. Yeah. Okay. And she made these amazing wigs um, mm. that were solid. Wow. Yeah. So okay. usually underwater, you're trying to get the whole flowing thing. Yeah. And she was like, if I'm going to go underwater, I want to do something that's not going to flow. Okay. So she got these wigs and she basically lacquered them. Yeah. So they were oh, like wow. helmets. Yeah. Um, but she'd put all like um, uh, like curls and waves and mm-hmm. stuff in them and they just looked so good. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. That is cool. Oh, it makes me think of, I've had this, um, there's a, a pretty famous um, a deviant art um gender bend of the villain Hades from Hercules. And so it's this female who's redone a blue wig, Mm. but it's the same style where it's super lacquered. And so like it's, so it's supposed to be up in flame, but it's so that they, she can walk around comic cons and things like that. Right. Right. And I'm just thinking about what it would be underwater. Probably amazing. You know, and like have that dark. Yeah. But the dark flames and the dark, um, the throne that he sits on. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, because his his robe flows. The robe uh-huh. is flowy. Yeah. And so that part would work really well. Mm. And, and it's else. like, but the hair to not move at yes. all. That would be awesome. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. That'd, That'd be cool. Be fascinating. Well, to work it out. Or you have two wigs. I'm sorry. It's all going. No, it's all going. <laughs> you have two wigs. You have one that doesn't move at all, and then you have one that does flow. Yeah. And see what the. Well, it's interesting because I, I shoot a lot of cosplay stuff as well. Oh, I'm sure. And so a lot of the anime characters have those hairstyles that are, you know, just oh, like yeah. these crazy shapes, yeah, but they yeah. don't move. Yeah. And so a lot of what the cosplayers do, they'll just basically super glue the wigs together. Mm-hmm. And so they just super glue all the ends. And then when you're underwater, they just don't move. Right. And so they keep that kind of iconic shape. It's really yeah. cool. That is really cool. That. Well, I imagine you could do a lot of... Um, you know, in Dragon Ball Z, those the famous shots that they do of like where people will do that like, and they'll yeah. jump oh, in the yeah. air backwards. Mm. But you could really do that a lot easier in water. Absolutely. I mean, like you just <laughs> hold that pose mm. and you could get all the shots. Yeah. And then absolutely, ah, this is great. I'm yeah. having so much fun. So, Brett, tell us what is like in the future for you. Like, what's next in Brett Stanley Land? Um, currently, I'm doing a lot of. Um, trips away so mm-hmm. a lot of workshops overseas mm-hmm. um yeah, in march i've got a, a workshop in the bahamas with oh ha- yeah with hannah yeah hannah mermaid, hannah mermaid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so that's going to be good it's, it's nice for me to get out of the swimming pool totally and actually get into the ocean which is mm-hmm. really nice yeah. yeah and do is all of your photography now underwater or did you and you had to build to just being a photographer that did that or? yeah i kind of transitioned fairly quickly i think okay um because the, it kind of coincided with my move from new zealand to sure. los angeles um and so i was i didn't have a lot of clients in los angeles anyway mm-hmm. so it, it kind of transitioned pretty quickly and um, when I first started, I had this like naming convention for my files so okay. that I would know which ones were which. Right. And it was, you know, all the dry stuff was just normal. Right. And then I would do like brackets underwater or UW. Um, and I still do that, but all my files are named <laughs> yeah. like that now. <laughs> and it's kind of pointless. Yes. Yeah. But it's just a thing you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was talking to uh, someone today about how hard it is, like if you haven't done something for a while and you go back and do it. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, a few times I've had to do dry photography. I'm yeah. like, how does this work again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why are you not hovering? <laughs> right. <That's laughs> right. Kind of, yeah. It's like astronauts coming back down to Earth and they think the air will still hold their water bottle. Right. Yeah. So oh, it yeah. crashes to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> not expecting and, gravity. Yeah, that's right. Not how yeah. that works. It's funny. Oh, that's really cool. Well, I am just the most inspired by all of your work. And I'm so like Thank excited you. that you get to share it with all our mermaid friends this weekend. It's so fun. Yeah, because Abby, you've done your foray into underwater photography, I think is fairly similar, where you just kind of got in a pool yeah, with well, a photographer who wanted to also do underwater photography. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and he has started out, the photographer I started out with um, did underwater brides. Right. He kind of did that. Um, one of the first ones to start doing that. And when I got my first mermaid tail in mm-hmm. 2000, whatever that was. I don't know, 12. 12, yeah. It would have been. Um, <laughs> uh, 2012. I literally, the day, I, the day the tail came to my house was the day we had the shoot booked. Mm-hmm. And so we just shot. And, wow. um, and I put the tail on. That was the first time I swam in a tail ever. And it was silicone and it felt like an extension of my body and like doing all these, like the underwater photography, I was like, this is where I belong. You know, it was, it was my favorite thing ever. And I want to do it all the time, every day, all the time. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's the thing. I think a lot of people feel that when they go underwater and they do something creative under there and it's like, holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think, you know, there are a few people, I don't know. Not everybody's as crazy as us, but I I feel more comfortable under the water than I do out of water, especially when photo shoots are concerned. Like mm. I just feel more, I don't know, um, it, natural. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a weird thing. Yeah. I, <laughs> it's not because you're a mermaid. It's true. It's true. It's part of me. Yeah, but I I think it's interesting how it, how it all panned out. Um, so the mermaids here, has it just been mermaids or have you gotten any like 
people in other clothes too. This weekend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's just been just total mermaids. Oh, wow. Um, I saw your picture, um, the photo of Lori. Yeah. She she was so beautiful always. Uh, Yeah. Lori's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So that looked amazing. She shot in your... She also shot in an underwater set, didn't she? Yeah, she came out to LA and shot in my Baroque... Oh, um, that's right. With yeah. her husband. Yeah, husband right. Bill. Yeah. And they were so cute because she, she had this amazing like Southern Belle mm-hmm. kind of big mm-hmm. massive dress. Mm-hmm. And I think it took a whole suitcase to bring it over. Oh, gosh. And then so Bill got like a, like a Southern, I don't know, what do you call it? Like, you know, with pantaloons and the, yeah. the rough oh, and okay, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So he's so supportive of her. He is. They are the cutest couple. Oh, yeah. I love that. He, was, uh, he sewed her dress for <gasps> the gala last night. Oh. Not so the dress, but you know, did, yeah. did adjustments for did, her. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he's a very capable man. Very, I had no idea. Yeah, but they came out and uh, both jumped into the set, and yeah, they just did amazing, like yeah. you know, twisting around, and you know, we had to try and stop uh, Laurie from just staying down there the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's basically I wearing this it. massive parachute as well. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there were. Uh, I've never been like freaked out underwater. Like, have you had clients? kind of freak out a little bit or um have you had any close panic. calls <laughs> panic is yeah. The word. panic yeah. yeah i've not had any uh actual close calls like mm-hmm. i've never had anyone in danger yeah i've had people who thought they were in danger yeah um mm-hmm. and I, actually a lot of what i do is work with people who either can't swim or have a fear of water. Okay. Oh, cool. Um, not so much in the mermaid community, but more in my just regular clients who are people who are just like, oh, I like that photo. Can yeah. I do that? Um, or in the pole dancing world. So I do a lot of underwater pole dance yeah. as well. Yeah. And so I've had people who I've had to spend like a good half an hour, 45 minutes with them in the shallow end just to yeah, get their eyes under the water. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. wow. Holding their hand and just kind of talking them into it and then get them out to the pole or to the set. Um, and then once they're out there, they're kind of fine. Yeah. yeah. But people have this kind of um, fear of the water, which is it's purely mental. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get it myself. Like I, water is my happy place, but it's also the place that I – kind of fear the most mm-hmm. um even in the middle of a shoot i'll you know hold my breath for just a little bit too long yeah and then i'm like oh god I yeah. Gotta go. yeah yeah and i'm drowning yeah yeah <laughs> it's happening now and then you gotta because i'm working i gotta maintain my cool so i'm just like that's all right i'm just gonna have a look at these photos for a second oh, and just kind of get myself together yeah yeah, yeah. take some deep breaths yeah mm-hmm. so yeah. no no actual close calls but i have a, a quite a bit of my job is psychological. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Kind of getting people in a good space where they feel comfortable in the water. Yeah. And it is interesting, even in our mermaid, we have the Nashville mermaid pod. Even in the pod, we have mermaids who truly like Danielle, you know, she mm-hmm. is afraid of the yeah, water. Yeah, she is afraid of water. <laughs> she's in a mermaid tail. Mm-hmm. And, but she came from the belly dancing world. And so, you know, this wasn't her first um, adventure. But, you know, it's interesting that, uh, I'm so like it's it's amazing that these people actually try it and like go for it and you know even though they have this giant yeah. fear of water. <laughs> I mean, when I do it, it's not. I don't. I grew up in water as well, and so my. Uh, uh, you all know this, but like I spent all of my summers in Southern Florida. So both right. in the ocean and in the pool, very used to being in water. So of course the first time I got into a mermaid tail, I was like, let's go swimming. Mm-hmm. And so I just got in and started flopping around and I was like, Oh, breathe. And so I've had to learn to be much calmer. Mm-hmm. And so whenever I do a new tail, so I just, I've tried some of the silicone mono fans and they're very heavy. And mm. so when I first got in it, I just had the tail in and I was sitting on the side and I just let the tail do its thing and I flipped mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, you're feeling fine. Like, this is all right. Mm-hmm. You know, because your first thought is this is going to bring me straight down to the bottom. Yeah. And if you're not used to that, wait. And as it turns out, you're, it's not going to do that. Um, it's quite buoyant. And so it's just getting over that mental hump of death, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It's yeah. a natural... Uh, reaction mm-hmm. for your brain to be like, hey, this is not where you're supposed to be. We're probably going to die here. Yes. You should probably come up for air. But I tell all my girls, I'm like, you're actually okay. Mm-hmm. And that's just a natural thing that your brain's telling you, but you've got to yeah. convince your body mm. that you are okay. You have a few more seconds here, like, and you will come up for air and it's going to be just fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to be all right. 
And that's kind of what I teach in my in my kind of clients kind of classes and stuff as well is just that your brain is your worst enemy. Absolutely. The brain it wants is. you to fail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the one telling you we're not meant to be here, we're going to die. Yeah. Whereas your body's like, "No, we're good." Yeah. We got plenty of oxygen in our blood, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Um but your brain is just freaking out with something new. Yeah. And a lot of what I do is just kind of getting people to ignore their brain a little yeah. bit yeah. and distract them. So it's about, especially in a photo shoot, it's about getting lost in the posing, mm-hmm. you know, think mm-hmm. about what your tail's doing. Think about what your hands are doing, mm-hmm. flicking that hair, you know, visualize the, what you want to look like. Right. And that means that there's less bandwidth for the brain to go, hang on. Right. <laughs> we need to go up. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. what is your, what is a photo shoot set up with you? Like, like how many people are on set to help? With all of that, is it just you and your clients or is it kind of a bigger production? It depends on uh, on how many people I'm dealing with, the type of the production mm-hmm. um, and the experience of the person. Okay. Yeah. So if I'm just dealing with one client, then it will generally just be me and the client in the pool. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I know that I am capable yeah. for whatever happens. Right, because so, you're scuba certified as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm rescue diver yeah. and okay. I have CPR and um, oxygen, all that sort of stuff. Perfect. All helpful things. Yes. yes. All good things. All, all good, good things. things. And I'm also the closest person to the client generally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if I have a safety diver or a lifeguard in there, they're not anywhere as close to the, the, the client as I am. Yeah. So if anyone's going to be there to help them, it's going to be me. Yeah. And Perfect. I'm constantly watching them and a lot of the times – I will be camera in one hand and the other of my hands is helping the other person, the client to the surface if I see that they're in trouble. Gotcha. Um, I don't recommend that people do this themselves. I feel very confident that I can do this. Um, If I'm working on a production where there's more than one person in the water, then we'll have safety divers um, and we'll have lifeguards on on set as well. Um, The main thing is just you just have to kind of think about what, the inherent danger is that you're in. So if I'm dealing in a in an empty pool like I was this weekend, mm-hmm. there's very little that can go wrong. Yeah. But if I'm dealing with one of my sets where there's <laughs> yeah, there's TVs, there's right. all sorts of stuff. There's tricycles, there's mm-hmm. like all sorts of things that you can get caught on or yeah. you know, mm-hmm. kind of get wedged in or any of that sort of stuff. Yeah. So that kind of brings up the um, the risk level mm-hmm. and I change how I shoot accordingly. Definitely. Okay. Interesting. Really yeah, I, I don't think about all the props. Yeah. It's never something. Well, I... that's, and that's another brain thing because I mm. have a memory of when I was a little girl and, you know, you stay, as a child, you stay under as long as you possibly yeah. can. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, I had been diving down and I'm pretending to be something. And I come up for air and the inflatable whatever ah, was yes. on top of me and yeah. someone was on it. Oh. And I couldn't. Yeah. get to my air. And so, mm. of course, my brain automatically mm. went to, you're going to die. Death. And so <laughs> I start immediately running out of oxygen and f- panicking, trying to shove this person off this, like, pool float or whatever it was. And then my hand found the edge, and I popped out, and I was like, oh, look at that. I'm not dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know, that's it's it's just exactly what you said before, is that it's not even that – you're anywhere close to it, but the no. minute that dress catches on something yeah. <laughs> in the oh. water, panic ensues. It's all gone. <laughs> yeah, I've had a similar situation like that at Ginny Springs. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Where because all the people who aren't mermaids or people who like the water are on their inflatables on top of that, yep. on top mm-hmm. of the spring, and I've been down there shooting, and I'll come up oh. and I'll be underneath like uh, some huge inflatable yeah. that I cannot find the edge of, yep. yeah, and it's like I'm ice diving or something, right? Yeah, yeah, ice diving. Freaks me out. Yeah. <laughs> I just think about Balto. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to breathe through ice. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely more to think about and more to like be calm about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. And that's what I tend to do as well is I tend to think about what can go wrong. Yeah. And then I'm thinking how can I fix that if it does go wrong. Perfect. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've called off photo shoots that I have – thought we're going to be too dangerous. Mm. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did a shoot with a girl who had made this massive dress. It was a cosplay, but it wasn't designed to go in the water. Oh. Right. But it was basically a, the dress was kind of like her wearing a, um, like a duvet, mm-hmm. like a, a, you know, a quilted kind of uh, oh. bedspread sort of thing. Gosh. And it just held the water 
and she was like so heavy and couldn't move. Yeah. So she would she'd be able to sink fine, but then when she get to the bottom, she if she pushed off, she, she wouldn't get, get mm-hmm, back up. Mm-hmm. So we had people in there kind of holding her and getting to push her back up again. And then I was like, we can't do this without the people in the photo. Yeah. yeah. So let's not do this. Yeah. Because this is too dangerous. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, and I'd rather do that than than oh than risk something. It. Yeah. 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 And Gosh. that just gives that person a reason to come up with an outfit that can possibly look similar. Yeah. Without b- b- all their possibility of death. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Heavy fabric <laughs> is scary. Like, yeah. with my Maleficent, uh, I mean, that was the first time, the first time ever that I had a mini panic moment. Okay. Because it was so heavy. It's so heavy. And the pool's 10 foot. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I'd get to the bottom and be like, yeah okay and just you know take a little bit longer to get back up yeah Mm. still got back up but just take a little bit longer so i just had to plan accordingly you know yeah fabric is different underwater friends very different oh yeah it can be a very sheer piece of fabric but it turns into a parachute yes it's crazy it's crazy so as far as being a photographer uh underwater versus above water uh, financially speaking, is it much more of an expense to do it underwater than it is above oh, water? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we the reason this. the reason there's not as many underwater photographers yeah. is because the barrier of entry is reasonably high. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't want to take their $1,000 camera and put it in right. something and stick it under the water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. boy. Um, but in saying that, it's, um, it's not as... You know, kind of once you've got your gear set up, you're kind of set. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if I was a um, a studio shooter, like I was dry mm-hmm. and above water and stuff, I'd be there'd be gear that I'd be buying all the time. Okay. Yeah. Um, and for me, I tend to make a lot of the gear that I use. Oh, oh so, really? Yeah, mainly because the stuff that I was doing when I started, you know, underwater portraiture wasn't particularly a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so being able to use studio lights and um and all that sort of stuff was not really around. Huh. So you just did it yourself? Yeah. Because most of the setups were built for wildlife photographers or divers. Right. Of and course. So that's when they had the lights attached to their cameras because yeah. yeah. they want to carry it around with them. Whereas yeah. I'm wanting to get those lights off yeah. and stick them in corners of the room yeah. and right. and have and lights TVs above. And yeah. windows. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I had to build a lot of that stuff, which kind of made things cheaper for me. Um, and I also like the problem solving of it. I like oh, okay. trying to make this stuff. Cool. Um, but yeah, it de- depends on, so you can get reasonably cheap setups, but they're riskier than the more expensive setups. Yeah. So you got to think about how much you want to keep that camera dry. So mm-hmm. then we probably won't have him build anything for our, um, very expensive camera. <laughs> Yeah. Glorified but, plastic bags. Yes, yeah. okay. Probably not ah. this time. Maybe next time. Yeah. Um, that's amazing, though, that you've, you have build most of your things. That's amazing. Yeah, it, and I, I kind of do stuff on the cheap. So until yeah. I know that it's going to right, it's kind of work gonna, and pay, mm-hmm. pay itself off, mm-hmm. I'd rather do use what I've already got and build yeah. something for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Makes most sense. I love yeah. that. Oh, that's so cool. And it's so technical too, which I mean, like works for my brain because I love kind of that side of it. But I tell you what, we've met the most creative people. I know. On this trip. It's crazy. Yeah. Because we crazy. keep talking to mermaids that are like, well, there wasn't anything I liked out there. So I made one myself. I'm like, with what brain cells do you do this? I don't have that. I don't have that. I can't find it. So I'm going to make it. Yeah. I That was not cultivated in my brain. <laughs> and it's fascinating. Yeah. I love that kind of DIY kind of thing, especially like a lot of the the tales that we had this weekend, they'd made their own. Yeah. yeah. And they were like nothing I'd ever seen before. Yeah. yeah. And it was amazing. For sure. Did and you see the fur one that they debuted today? I, I didn't see it in the water. I saw it afterwards where it was lying wet. lifeless and wet. <laughs> yes. It, that was, it was super interesting to see. I actually liked it better after it was wet but out of the water um, because the textures that came out of the fur were super interesting. We should let everyone listening know mm. exactly what we're talking about. Sorry. Um, they're called s- selkie, tales. selkie Tales, and they were debuted here at Mermagic Con this weekend. Um, we, they did the first swim in mm-hmm. one, and it is truly fur. 
as fun a fur. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but like longer than like an otter. So the fur was definitely longer than an otter's fur, but not quite like lion's mane. Right, length. right. So kind of in the like middle of that. Mid. And so, you know, I got to talking to some people about the differences between those two because, I mean, obviously there's not the oils involved that an animal has that keeps their in the undercoat dry, mm. um, but that also makes them uh, streamlined. Oh, it's leaked through the water. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that was really interesting. And then um, – I think his the waist wasn't quite staying, so the the poor yeah. mother that was swimming <laughs> yeah, in it kept that. having to. It was like a keep it up. A, what do you call it? Like a tester. Yeah, like it was a it prototype for sure. Prototype. Yeah, yeah. Do they and, need suspenders or something? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh, that, that would kind of cute. So cool. <laughs> um, so it was definitely interesting, and I love that it got to, to be debuted because I mean, yeah, new for things sure. in the in the mermaid in worlds. the mermaid world are always fun. Um, and it makes us all, it gives us all creative juices to start flowing and see, you know, what else there could be. Um, For sure. But yeah, it was really, it was, it was very different. Um, and it was really cool to see. Yeah. How was the fur under there? Did it, did it kind of move back and forth? Or? It definitely a, a little bit, yeah. And yeah. the nice thing about it is that the, the, the top of the fur was very dark, but the undercoat was quite blonde. And mm. so the difference between those two colors comes out a lot, especially when the fur as was moving. moving. Right. But then, as, as I said, when it came out of the water and it was all kinds of different ways, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's when you saw a lot of, a lot of color, I thought. Right. Yeah. But I'd love to see the footage that they took underwater mm. to see how it looked, because obviously it was looking through the surface. Yeah. I couldn't see it as well. Um, it was interesting. Yeah, it was. Well, Brett, do you have any advice for somebody that's wanting to get into the underwater photography world? Yeah, just try it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do it. Um, I love it. I mean, don't uh, – a lot of people tend to go – if they have the money, they will spend the money on the best stuff. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe in doing that. I think that if you can get a GoPro or mm-hmm. get any of these underwater cameras, mm-hmm. get a cell phone. Yeah. Take photos, take video and just see if if it's for you. Yeah. And if you can do good things with that, then imagine what you can do with right. you know, more expensive stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the thing is people will dump a lot of money into it and then they'll go, actually, it's not this, it's not for me. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. because there's, I'd say there's like 75% of being an underwater photographer is not even taking photos. It's knowing how to move underwater and also knowing how to direct someone else under the water. Okay. Yeah. So what I've learned over the seven seven odd years that I've been doing this is how to get the best out of the people I work with mm. okay. because they're like, Oh, I don't know. I'll just do some things. And then you're like, I don't know if that looks good. Cause <laughs> yeah. I don't really, I'm just, I just want to take photos. You right. Know? Um, but the more you learn how to tell someone what their body looks like under mm-hmm. the water and how to get the best kind of lines out of their bodies, that's when you get good photos. Okay. And that's how I get probably the best photos I get is because I've got a good kind of rapport with the client Mm -hmm. and I'm able to tell them how to tweak things to make it look better. Yeah. Mm. Some of my favorite photos, of course I'm a little biased because well, it's Hannah Mermaid, but, uh, she does, she did the, I believe it was Alice in Wonderland maybe, or she was in some, uh, some costume but her lines are so good and so like you know those are the best shots whenever and i do think it's like a confidence thing too like you can tell if the client's like not feeling it or whatever underwater but just all the the lines underwater are so crucial to an amazing shot and of course hannah mermaid all of her shots are amazing so i'll show you some okay yeah (laughs) and it doesn't hurt that she's been doing it for so long forever yeah Yeah. and if there's anyone you want to learn from it's her. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Which you can at the retreat in March. Well, yeah. It's sold out, unfortunately. Yeah, I, but oh, just kidding. You can't. <laughs> Next, year. <laughs> Next year. Next <laughs> year. But we, we do hold workshops a, a lot of the time. So yeah. uh, a workshop with me and Hannah. We do them in LA. And uh, if anyone wants to get us anywhere else in the world, we'd love to come. Totally. You want to come to Nashville? I yes. want to go to LA again. I know. <laughs> That's where Disneyland is. So That's where Disneyland. We go to Disneyland and then we go to a workshop <laughs> and we have a pretty, pretty place. <laughs> yes, that'd be great. My studio is like 40 minutes from Disneyland. Oh my gosh. Huzzah. Yeah. There you go. Oh, we're very good at Disneyland. We are so good at Disneyland. We are pro Disneylanders. You do Disneyland well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, because I lived in L- I lived in Culver City. Oh. For like two and a half years. Yeah. And then Abby had a thing. 
that she had to do. And I'm, I would tell people, I was like, here's what I need you to do. I need you to tell me exactly the things that you want to go do and I will make them happen. <laughs> but you have to listen to me. <laughs> and we got to, like, when I tell you it's time to go, we got to go. Yeah. So, and we met all the people. We did. Mm. We, we went all across that mm-hmm. town. <laughs> I have done, I once did both parks twice in the same day. Shut up. Mm. Oh, yeah. You must, I mean, have been, you must have been exhausted or you didn't do a lot I'm of them. I'm very good at it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I'm just very good at it. Did you, have a, like, did you have a schedule? Yes. Oh, yeah. I know exactly of what course. I want to do, like where I need to go for each one. Because the key is to ride the rides during parades. Mm-hmm. Oh, because right. that's yeah. if you're not I mean hey the parades are fantastic yeah, don't get me wrong you gotta go to a parade you should go to a parade because they are really amazing but they have multiple parades they do <laughs> and uh, that's when you have to go on some of the rides that have typically the longest wait times right. they get cut in half during uh, parades pro tips now you know wow <laughs> so yeah well, it's just been a pleasure Thank having you, so you much. on the show, Brett. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for having so me. Thank you so much yeah. for coming to see us. Where can we find you on social media? Uh, I am on Facebook. If you just <coughs> type Brett Stanley, you should, hopefully I should come up. All right. Um, Instagram, I'm Brett S. Photo. Um, and we'll link it yeah. in the description of the video. And it'll probably pop up right here, actually, it's, yeah, if you're yeah, watching. Yeah. It's instead of my face. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, right yeah. Here. somewhere. Here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. And wait, anywhere else? Uh, no, I don't really. Uh, Twitter's kind of pointless to me. No, oh, right. You're um, not on TikTok like the cool kids. I are. tried TikTok and then I realized I wasn't cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of where I am. Having that right uh, yeah. We're, time. I mean, like, like, this is 30. Like, this is just where we are. I don't know. Whatever. I have to care enough <laughs> 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 to be cool. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm 45, but I don't think they would have let me on there. So. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. Well, you can follow Brett at all these places that we have listed, yes, not yes. including TikTok. And you can follow us at Everyday Mermaid Podcast on Instagram. Check us out at patreon.com slash Everyday Mermaid. We would love to see you there. Get some exclusive Mermaids After Midnight content over there as well. Mm-hmm. Very salty. But until next time, we will see you on the flip side. Bye, mermaids. Bye. <laughs>